the Fed is bluffing. <laughs> this is uh, the the easiest way to explain the uh, the FOMC Fed Open Market Committee minutes, which were just published. Now, this is not something that the Fed just said today. This is from their past meeting, which was you know, a while ago. The minutes get published. Um, uh, well after Powell's press conference. I covered his press conference here. Uh, and again, all I can say is that they're bluffing. The headline from CNBC uh, that I just got like a few minutes ago on my phone, I just skimmed sort of the highlights of, of the minutes here. But the, the, the big takeaway, <laughs> according to CNBC, is that the Fed says that they're going, that they would raise interest rates if inflation continued to be high, uh, higher than expected. Uh, for a prolonged period. This is the Fed's new line. Uh, because the way that the Fed rules uh, the monetary world is not through action, it's through threats. Threats that they deem to be credible and that they hope everyone else deems to be credible. And as far as I'm concerned, this is not a credible threat at all. But assuming that the Fed does have sufficient credibility, um, what we will see as a result of these threats, which the Fed will continue to make as inflation continues uh, to run above, moderately above 2%, or whatever language Jerome Powell likes to use, uh, this will, if it has the desired effect, push down inflation expectations on Wall Street, and you will start to see speculators uh, price in lower inflation in the future. And in that sense, inflation will sort of start to subside. Uh, you will not see rates behave the same way. You will not see corporate America uh, behave the same way. Uh, people will start to act as if there is not going to be uh, a significant amount of inflation in the year because, or in the future, uh, because the idea is, oh, well, the Fed has our back. The Fed won't let this happen. This goes back kind of to the idea of expected inflation versus unexpected inflation. Uh, the Fed does not want people to expect inflation. The Fed wants to manipulate uh, market participants into expecting prices to, or expecting inflation to go down. And so therefore, uh, they will not be raising their prices as much as they otherwise would. And so therefore, the rate at which prices are rising will decelerate without the Fed actually having done anything. And this uh, will be the way in which the Fed tightens. They will tighten uh, implicitly, but not really in any actual sense. I still stand by what I said, that the Fed is not going to raise rates because the implicit tightening, the expectation that the Fed is going to raise rates uh, is going to trap Jerome Powell. Because if the market actually takes Powell seriously, we're going to see a deflation in asset prices. Because asset prices are you know, predicated on the idea that, oh, the Fed has our back and the Fed is going to keep inflating asset prices. Well, how does the Fed inflate asset prices, uh, you may ask? Well, through uh, maintaining low interest rates. Because, you know, basic fundamental analysis and such, historical norms, um, you know, by all those sorts of metrics, price to earnings ratios, uh, all these assets, stocks, bonds, housing, they're way overvalued. The only thing that justifies this value is don't fight the Fed. But if the Fed starts to move in the other direction, don't fight the Fed uh, would suggest that you sell everything. And that's the last thing that Jerome Powell wants to happen. He does not want stocks to go down, not even a little bit. He doesn't even want to, see, you know, I mean, I remember, I'm so old. I remember uh, when the S&P was below 3,000. I know that feels like a million years ago, but if the S&P were to return to that level that it was at a couple of years ago, that would be uh, a catastrophic stock market collapse. All of the growth, 100% of it, since uh, late 2018, has been predicated on uh, the, the idea that Jerome Powell has the market's back and that he will do everything in his power to, to protect and defend Wall Street. 
remember the the you know the big rally after Trump was elected was all predicated on tax cuts, um, and then we got those tax cuts, and that was all priced in, um, and then in late 2018 things started to come apart as Powell was raising rates, and what did Powell have to do? He had to put a floor in. He had to say no. So far and no further. This is never going to happen again. I, Jerome Powell, chairman of the Federal Reserve, will protect you and your assets. And I will do that by cutting interest rates back to zero and restarting quantitative easing. Well, before that, he just paused uh, the um, uh, he paused the rate hikes and then he paused the balance sheet runoff. But then in time, he started cutting rates and restarting QE. Now, Jerome Powell's supposed to be tapering QE, and the Fed is going, well, we could accelerate our tapering uh, of QE uh, if, uh, if inflation doesn't calm down. Again, it's all a bluff. And if people call, if, if they actually call Powell's bluff, or I shouldn't say call his bluff, because uh, that's the wrong term. If they just take him seriously, and they start to price in this idea, well, I guess it is calling his bluff, price in this idea that the Fed is going to raise rates, that's, I mean, it's going to be a disaster for Powell as far as he's concerned. So he'll never get to the stage of actually raising rates. Even if it's all a game of expectations, uh, the, the expectations that the Fed will be able to um, rein in inflation runs counter to uh, Powell's real goal, you could say his true mandate for driving stock prices ever higher and higher. And again, same goes for bonds and real estate. Stocks are just the sexiest asset class. That's what people like to talk about and speculate the most about. Although I guess now crypto is becoming the sexy asset class of get rich quick schemes. It used to be people would write books on penny stocks and how to get rich quick. Now it's crypto stuff. Now, even talking about this, though, Powell is going down a dangerous road. Um, even planting this idea and trying to set this expectation that the Fed will, uh, at the end of the day, rein in inflation is going to be tough to roll back the more that they go into this. It's not too late yet, but if it comes down to it and the market actually starts to price in rate cuts, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. Or, I mean, rate hikes. I mean, if I were Powell, I mean, you got to pick one of these two goals. Either you want to rein in inflation or you want to keep stocks up forever. And you should ignore the other thing. Don't try and play both sides. This is how you really are going to screw the pooch. Uh, if Powell just cared about stock prices, you know, he could keep them going up forever and just ignore inflation. And say, you know what, I don't care about that. That doesn't matter. It's transitory, which they've been trying to do for a while. I guess it's getting so bad that they can't keep ignoring it. Um, but if that's the case, go 100% the other direction like Volcker. Say, you know what, no, we're going to stop inflation in its tracks. And you know what, inflation's not nearly as bad as when Volcker was in office. Uh, and so Powell could probably rein it in fairly easily. And so, yeah, stocks might go down. But... Is that really so bad? Is it really going to be the end of the world? For Powell, the answer is yes, because everyone he knows in his entire life and his entire circle of people on this planet uh, has a lot of money in the stock market and in you know asset uh, assets in general. He is part of the asset owning class, which is fine, um, but. Because of that, he, in his head, is not able to relate to as much the more common concern of, hey, <laughs> everything that I'm buying costs me more money, and I'm not making more money at work. Now, the other question is, how long will Powell continue down this path? How long is he willing to go down this, how long is he willing to bluff about uh, raising rates? Because again, I've said I don't think he's going to do it. I hope he does it, and if he... Um, if he does do it, I will, uh, you know, I will apologize and say, you know what, thank you, Powell, you did the right thing for once. Um, but again, for now, I still don't think he's going to do that. So when does he get off this train? Is it after the stock market falls 5%? Probably. Uh, is it after uh, the stock market falls 10%? I would think definitely. Uh, is it after the stock market falls 20%? Certainly, he. I mean, at that point, 
he could not continue to say, you know what, inflation is a problem that I have to deal with by hiking rates. What's Powell's pain tolerance? That's what you have to be asking yourself if you want assets right now. And what's your pain tolerance? Are you willing to ride that out? Are you going to try and sit on the sidelines and uh, wait for this storm to blow over? And then, you know, maybe go back in and, and buy things at a 5% discount at a 10% discount at a 20% discount after Powell inevitably flip-flops. I guess we'll just have to find out. But anyway, with that said, I will, I'm sure, not record anything tomorrow because it's Thanksgiving. So I will see you folks sometime over the weekend.